Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of this week's Nightfall, which is the Fallen Saber. I'm doing it on Night Stalker. This is a kind of the fragments and the aspects that I'm using. Uh, I'm the, one of the most important things that I'm using in this because Togetherness is on. My favourite Nightfall modifier is Worm Husk Crown, so dodging gives me a portion of health back. I'm also going to be using the Duty Bound, which old D2 players will know this was actually the Sabbath and Song uh, Nightfall specific reward that they've just brought back and it's to try out that stun and recovery uh, perk, see how effective it is at stunning champions. I'm using the Hothead and Tiku's Divination obviously for barriers. I'm using the Adept Hothead, you don't have to use that, it's not required. Uh, you can go through and have a look at the mods, but most of it is kind of geared to getting wells that will give me my health back from solar. Uh, I've obviously got uh, Powerful Friends on, which gives me a plus 20 uh, mobility boost, which gives me my 100 mobility. It means I get my dodge back faster, so I can dodge and get health back faster. Tiku's was a decision I made because uh, we've got Hot Knife on, which all... all all shanks have solar shields, but also it's kind of a few invisibles in here. So if I hit fire it, because the whole idea of Tiku's hit fire to attach the explosive uh, arrows, shoot the, shoot the enemy again and they explode, and you can cause chain explosions. The whole point of that is I could maybe mark some of the invisibles, you know, because they'll be burning from the hit fire shots. So as you can see here, we're driving towards the start of the strike. Now, I'm going to be taking this a little bit kind of chill here. Uh, I'm going to be doing this the same way I would do it if it was a GM, the same way I've done other other runs on Master of this in the past. Uh, I'll activate. I'll activate the Warsat. I'll get it to 1 to get the ship to come in. And then I'm going to bug out to the back and just be, just be chill. There we go. The ship is coming in now. Now with the ship, you see I've, I've shot the ship. The minute you shoot the ship, I've uh, got to be careful with that. The minute you shoot the ship, uh, the guns will come out and you can shoot the guns off. Because a new thing in, in, in the, the Nightfalls, which I'm sure most of you are aware, is a new modifier, which is an acute burn. So you take X amount, 50% more damage from that burn, and you deal 25% more damage with that element. Well, it's arc in this one. So you take a lot of damage, extra damage from arc, uh, so, I, putting on, you'll have seen when, I, when you've seen the chest plate that I had on, I had uh, double of the new uh, resist mods, the Arc and Solar. Well, they kind of build up, so it's, I, think it's, I think it might be like 20% or 20-25% 20, 20, for the first mod. Having two of them on gives you a 40% resist. So we're basically negating, we're, we're wiping out that 40% mod. That 50% that burn. Now it's just 10% more arc we're taking. Now, you can see here, whenever the ads come, I'm getting off the plate. Because the ad spawns are tied to the plate. Now, again, if I wanted you guys to watch me do this really quickly, I couldn't really call it a guide. It would be like a, a trophy run or whatever. I'm trying to show you guys the, the most effective, least tricky way for you guys to do it. So, we're going to stop this champion if we can. There he is, stunned. So, if I can take my rocket out, we'll fire one. And then we'll fire another. Now, though, it's... I, I wanted to get this, even though I said, you know, I'd, it's about showing you the most efficient and quick way to do it. Uh, we'll just mark him. There we go. If you can get that first section done relatively quickly, keep an eye on the timer. The timer lets you know when the ships are going to be coming in. So, I think it's about 40%. Yep, yeah, just 40%, 40 there or thereabouts. So, when the second lot of ships come, there's this blast barrier here. Use this as cover from the shots. You can shoot through the middle of it. There's one set of guns come down, but the ads that are going to come out here. So, you see with the first set, it was just maybe one or two invisibles, some dreg, but there was an overload. With this set of ads, you're going to get some snipers here. You're going to get an arc captain, but the champion is going to be a barrier. So... The ads that come out of here are, uh, there are there are smaller numbers and they're much more spread out. And apart from that captain, none of them really push down here. But that doesn't mean where we are behind these blast barriers, they're not completely safe. 
it would be, you know, I've never done a nightfall where, where you're completely safe at, at all. But if you're kind of pushed back there, you allow yourself just a little bit more time to assess the area. Still have to, the reason why I said you're not completely safe is because arc damage has increased and those ads are going to fire grenades. But you want them to give, make their job as difficult as possible. So as you can see here, I'm going to push off of the plate if I can. I don't want to push too far towards the enemies. Uh, because the champion's going to come out. Now, when the cha here's the champion coming out. When the champion comes out, I like to get... I'll throw that grenade, see if I can get any ads. You can see there we've got another little wave of ads. I'll dodge here. I like to get behind the champion. The champion now doesn't know where I am. Now, you see my health. It's because I've got one of the solar mods on that increase when you pick up a solar a solar uh, well, it gives you health. And that is, that is kind of thingied, uh, linked to the solar affinity a a any any armor that's that's a solar a solar affinity a solar energy you can put that mod on and I'm struggling to remember what it's called but basically when you pick up an uh, a solar elemental well you start health regeneration and it works even here I've also got uh, if I pick up an orbalite it's one of the fragments if I pick up an orbalite uh, you see there I'm getting my health back uh, you can see there on the left hand side of the screen the healing symbol comes up, you get 10 seconds of healing, which is, it's giving me full health, even on togetherness. Uh, the other one I've got on, obviously I've got the Catalyst for Tiku, so it double kills will produce an orb, and I've got on, uh, picking up an orb of light uh, gives me devour. But what I've noticed is that's not so effective, because, you see there, I can't pick it up because I've got my super. I'm not sure having your super should really affect that working. So there you can see we we're at just about 70%. The last ships come in. Now what you're going to have here is you're going to have the main enemies. You're going to have an overload champion. You're going to have a server. But you're going to have quite a few uh, invisible kind of vandal guys. I can't. I really don't like those guys, especially in here, running about with a lot of wheels. It's bad enough all the time we've seen it in Crucible, now we've got to see it in PvE. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm not expecting to do much to the champion. Uh, I just wanted to take out, you see there, almost killed the champion. The grenade stunned the champion. And now, the auto rifle to finish the job on the stunning. Now, you can't, I could have... Uh, I could have uh, just fired a rocket and cleared all those. But, uh, well, I didn't realise there were as many of them there. So, again, now that we know, that we know what ads we've got, but be careful with those guys, especially invisibles, which is why I like to mark them so I get at least an, the outline of them. Got to be careful uh, of those invisibles. But because we're, because we know there's no other ships coming in, uh, there's a, there's the last uh, take fallen captain. We'll just put a rocket on him uh, because we know there's no other ships. We don't have to watch the timer. Now I could have saying about the timer. You can actually uh, you could I could have actually just went invis and just ran around the plate to get it to a hundred. And, and if I'd have done that, uh, all the ads but all the ads that were still there would have despawned. There's a, another invis. I haven't quite got my, my dodge. There we go. The, the invises can be a little bit uh, annoying, obviously, because it's so hard to track them sometimes. There he is in front of me. And I think I'm safe. Just dodge, get some health. There's a couple left. Not, not much. And then I can go and capture the plate. There we go. Might get another another couple of ads coming in, another wave of ads. I don't I don't think I get any more invisible, so there's an ad right behind me. So what I'm gonna do is just put some of them there. There is another invisible up. So I, there we've marked them. So once you explore them, he can't hide after that. He can he, he can over time, but not immediately. So I just fired, I just fired a shot just to, I think he might still be about somewhere. There he is, he's up top. There he is. Got him. 
and that's that. So, so the idea in this first section is to manage manage the warsat. Now, beforehand, you had only when it was a D one strike, you only had so much time to uh, to capture the plate. But now you, you're okay because you, you're it's score based, so you've got a time limit on the score. So, kind of works at about thirty percent for the first one's like 30, 40 percent, the second one's seventy percent. That's that from zero. As soon as you step on it, you'll get one ship, and then at like forty percent, you'll get another. You'll get two more ships, and at seventy percent, you'll get the last ship. So and they switch switch areas. So when you come and down, when you come down at this area, you've got a whole heap of ads out here. What I do is I take the four exploders so they don't push it in here, and then I come in here. Now all the ads mostly are going to be out here. Now what you've got to just throw a grenade out there sometimes. With the power of the ads, sometimes they will just shoot your grenade and it will just be mid-air. Now you've seen there, and that will happen a few times, when you when you take out so many ads, you'll get more ads from behind you. So that's why I keep ducking in. To our left, we have a, a barrier champion and an overload with some sniper vandals. So a pretty easy time. It's very, very straightforward and easy. But, like everything else, like I've always said, repeatability and strategy will definitely are the way to go with, with, with stuff like this. You can see, because I'm in the kill box, you really have to be careful. There we go, I was prepared, because after I was hitting shots, it didn't matter whether I killed the guy or not, I was coming around here to check. And as I say, that hit fire in Tiku's, it really helps just bring... Bring uh, bring everything a little bit closer. Uh, in, in in terms of knowing what you're supposed to do and where the enemies are. So what I could have done here, as you can see, I could dodge. No, no, I'm just gonna wait because I know that all those ads will be hiding round to the left. I'm gonna wait for my dodge again because I need to separate them. Now I might not be able to go out and just do business straight away got to try and separate them because it's really difficult to... I want to take the barrier out first because the barrier will shield the overload. It's really difficult because if you teach, if I just take out the barrier, which I could probably do, if I just take out the barrier, so you see there, I'm going to... That's exactly what I've done. I've put a shot on. I'm going to try and break the barrier shield. And you can't because these guys will push you. That is what we wanted. We wanted those guys to push because if they just stay down the bottom, they will still be, as you can see there, they'll just be shielded by the by the barrier. So I've managed to take two of the snipers. I had to engage. It's not a wasted engagement. I had to engage to get rid of those snipers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the barrier show me his hand. So I'm not going to try. I'm not going to waste any more rockets because you can do that. You can fire away and he'll just dodge every shot. What you don't want... As for the barrier, I was I say I was lucky there. It wasn't luck. It was just good that the barrier. Sometimes, he, when he gets ready to shield himself, he'll. Uh, when he gets ready to shield himself, he'll. Very, very, very good for us, I suppose. Very, very helpful. He'll go into cover and shield. And there's nothing you can do. So. What what I like to do is bait the snipers, as you see me do there. And then. Once you bait the snipers, so we want we want him to we wanted him to step into that grenade. He didn't. I just got to watch out here. Another sniper, and you might have noticed there. Two rockets takes the overload out. You might have noticed there the snipers were invisible, and that is because there is it's a new set of modifiers that that's in the nightfall. Some ads appear invisible when they're farther away, and some appear uh, invisible when they're closer. And that was a, an absolutely awesome. Uh, teleport from the champion. So what I'm going to do here, I could have just dodged, got another another rocket, but uh, I mean the auto rifle really does do a good job of taking this overload down. And because I've got another mod that, again, if you want to pause and have a look at the way I set my character up, I've got Lucent Finisher on. So if I finish a champion, or as the mod says, a light bearing hive, I get heavy for me and my teammates. So Finishing champions is a great way. You, it doesn't take any super or anything off you. It's just a great way to get heavy. So now that we've reached, this is the halfway point of this encounter. 
what I've done is I've broke that that generator. Take out this exploder. I broke the generator, and that brings a heap of ads from the doorway we've just wired with Super at. But what it also brings, and you'll see them here, there might be one right in front of us as well, is it brings exploder shanks out. Now the cool thing is you'll see there that I got true sight, which allows me to see where everything is on the map. Now, this is this could be tricky. Sometimes the champions they're a little bit lonely. So uh they stick they stick together. You can see there I'm not too proud to admit it, I did mess up there, so what I'm gonna do is just completely reset. The first rocket I was pretty sure locked on. And it didn't. So hopefully dodge. And again, both of them are up here. So now I'm just gonna throw a grenade that stops both of them. It's also gonna weaken them. So anything this hits is gonna do big damage. So now I'm gonna try and use my auto rifle to finish him off. I've dodge, get some health back. It's just an I've I've always had a problem with back with champions that stick together like that. It's it's really annoying. Uh, for the takedown, you can see I, I was quite annoyed at the fact that I couldn't get... It, it wouldn't matter what weapons I was using there. I, I couldn't get one champion isolated. So, we're back. We'll see what's happening here now. Normally, when you when you stop one, like what's happened there, you uh, the second one runs away, which is kind of what happened there. So, what I'm trying to do here is exactly what I've done to start with. Now reload. Take out that first that first champion. Now I'm gonna finish the second one. I can see I've got a brick of heavy. I knew I had a fair bit of heavy, uh, and I don't have any heavy left. But this auto rifle gives me actually a chance to show off the auto rifle's capability. Now I never actually noticed when I was doing it how much health you get back from stunning, but you'll have seen there it put me up to full. So it's it was almost. But just over a quarter health I got back there for stunning a champion. And I think it reloads it from reserves. There you go. See how much health I got back from that stunning recovery? Definitely worthwhile. And, and I think it showcased the fact that... I remember when it when the auto rifle first came out. There was videos everywhere talking about it being the next the, the next big thing. And it was never the ne next big thing. I, I have to tell you guys. This is a real option for overloads this season. A real, a real option. Unfortunately, because it's an auto rifle, that is about all it done in this front was stop some overloads. But hey, it done the, it done what it said on the ten. That's good enough for me. So here we are at this this arc section, which I, I I personally, and I you know I'm not being trying I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I can see a lot of people maybe having an issue with this. I'm going to tell you how, how I've done it here solo, my way of thinking. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to grab the orb, and then I'm going to run down. It's going to be, I'm going to run down this right-hand track, uh, and then when I get to the second input, so that I'm going to slide, because you can still go at the same speed sliding. And when I get in here, I'm going to dodge, go and fizz, and I'm going to pick the orb up. I'm going to wait for the lightning to pass. You see there, now I can go straight past the exploders. Easy money. If I was doing this uh, on a different character, which I am going to do another run on that, as I say, I'm interested to see how the Titan behaves in here. I probably would have put like an overshield up and maybe, maybe, uh, maybe shot them at, at like the halfway point, especially the exploders, and then I'd have maybe thrown in a grenade to suppress at the at the at the point where you're slamming the orb. I have to say. From now on in, these next two sections, I think, are the most difficult. Simply because of the, the, just the, the volume of enemies and the fact that you are in a kill box. Because you can't really, you know, you, I mean, you can, you can go out here. Uh, I don't know why you would want to. There's some exploders. I'll just throw my grenade and see if I can take this overload. Dodge, go and fizz, jump over, and there we go. And that's the overload down. I don't know why you would want to go out there for too long. 
but uh, as, you, as you've seen, you can go out there. Now, what you're going to have now is you're going to have a barrier, and then it's just Overlord City. You're going to get quite a few Overlord champions coming in here. Now, as you can see, I got pushed by... I think every ad that I would not want to face in this room is in this room. So these uh, these invisible invisible guys have always been a nightmare. No one of the overlords, and th this isn't. Oh my god! Why did he do that? This ha happens quite a lot. So I could have I could have uh, I could have pushed it and tried tried to stun him to get the health. Just what I was doing there. I know that the the ball won't do that much to to the champion, but there were ads next to the champion. So I wanted to chain that explosive damage. I want him to push over so I can I can take this overload. We'll dodge here, see what we've got. There we go, that should take the last two. So the reason why I attached the explosive arrows to the to the overload was, was to deal damage to the ad next one. So you see there, it was unfortunate. Uh, I would have got my full health back, but it didn't matter, I did actually get it. Uh, I would have got my full health back, but the, the overload hit me just as I was I, I was regening. So now, we are in the same position. Overloads, barriers. See there, I, got, I was getting hit pretty heavily, and the reason I was getting hit, hit is because... Man, t it's the barrier here, it's not even the overloads, it's the barrier that's the problem. I just want to see if I can see that shank the barrier shield was shielding all the enemies right i've got my dodge i'm just trying to see if i can i've got my dodge i'm not really just wanting to dodge for the sake of it there's ads coming in Let's see if we can get some chain damage going on there dodge now so i can actually come clean out and then we'll throw that at this overload and the grenade's still doing damage. But because it's an overload grenade, that makes a difference. So if you do deal damage, you guys all know this. If you deal damage with a weapon that, that, that doesn't have the mod on. So if you deal damage to an overload without... And it's not an overload weapon. It won't... Uh, it, it, it'll do damage, but it won't stop the overload from regening the, its health. But because the grenade was... Was... Uh, Right, so I'm going to have to try and just keep the, the damage on that champion. Now I'm going to reload and see if I can get... Nope, because it, I couldn't get the, the shot off because he would have just dodged. And it would have been a waste. Now I can get the shot off and that kills the Marauders. And it's, you know... Uh, it's just an easier time if you can, you know, don't don't rely on taking a champion out with a rocket every time. If, you know, if you need to reload, try and get your reload off, but then just switch back to either the auto rifle for an overload or the bow for a barrier. So, you see here, you can see what's in front of us here. <sighs> That's a horrible room. Because every ad that you really need to take care of can run away and hide around to the left. Where all the ads you don't want to be. Like, if a couple of those ads run to the left, I'll hit you at the same time. It's the end of this run. So, what we need to do, really, is take this barrier. We take the barrier, and then none of the other ads are safe. But while the barrier's up, the same as in the last room, while the barrier's up, they kind of have uh, the, you know, that kind of, you can see there, that tether. So we, we want this barrier to come out because as soon as he comes out, we can start putting it on him. I suppose it is just a little bit of RNG in which direction the barrier, you know, moves to once it's been hit. But what I tried to do there was I tried to move to disengage because the barrier just got caught up in his position. So now that I can see that the barrier isn't really going to, I'm going to really play ball that much. I've got to keep trying to disengage. So the barrier goes back and it has a roaming pattern. Because that's what happens with these ads. They've got a pattern of movement. If you attack them or they get caught up in a, in a, in a certain pattern that you don't want them to be in, 
you have to reset the their movement so that they're not you know they, they become very defensive in their movement and you don't want that you want them to go back to their little pattern of movement their little area that they'll, they'll roam in between but the minute you do damage sometimes and you've seen it yourself the minute you do damage to some of these ads they just hide in a corner somewhere you have to disengage from them before they before they uh, will come back out in the open so and it worked a treat the barrier started coming back round now we've got a heap of enemies around here and about 47 overload champions. I have no idea why, what the need is for all these overload champions around the corner. Like, one isn't bad enough. You know, how many overloads do we put around here? One, nah, two, yeah, three, together? Yeah, that sounds about right. What we're going to make stop them? Auto rifles. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> So we managed to take one because once you, once one of them gets stuck in that, that grenade, it's it's not a good time for them. So what we're going to have to do here is try, try, get another rocket off. There we go. Very easy. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I, when it's easy, I do say it's easy. Uh, that, that's, that was just, it doesn't always happen like that. But when it does, it looks pretty easy to take three of them down. But when they're all up on each other like that, you know, sometimes they'll just be teleporting in front of each other and taking each other's damage. So I've just noticed that I don't have the greatest amount of heavy. So, we're lucky enough that that one rocket put this overload to finishing uh, position. And that takes us straight to the boss. So, right up until this point, the key word has been uh, know your location, know your environment, and do not take any chances with your movement. Because you take so much damage and in, 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 in the areas that you, the, the, where you come into the areas, you, you're in line of fire almost immediately. So be very strategic with the way that you put damage on, you know, and when you choose to damage, and when you choose to back down. So here we are, we're in the boss room. Where I am now is where I'm going to be doing damage from. If you're doing this on the hunt, of this is perfect. Uh, if you're not doing this on the Hunter, and you're following this run for a Warlock, or then there are other places that you can you can actually do damage from in this room. And um, when I get into position, I will show you. But the idea is, this shank, you want to get him out of there quickly. Each time, you want to get him out of there quickly. So as soon as he comes in, I pop my super straight on him. Two of those, one rocket. Two rockets, and no, I want them out of there. Three rockets. There you go. Now I'm using an arc base, an arc rocket. Quite simply because it's arc burn, a cute arc burn. I'm doing 25% more damage with arc. Uh, if 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 hot knife hadn't been on, if the shanks didn't have solar shields, I probably would have just used the Galahorn because make no mistake about it, the Galahorn will out DPS all these rocket launchers easily. Doesn't matter about the burn. Now what I just done there, never do that. You see I'm running I'm running now. I cannot engage that champion because when you're running from where I am to where I was wanting to go, do not run in between those two things. Those little pillars that are popping up and down because they they they, they shoot out they shoot out lightning. You know, it's electricity, which is arc. Now, that gives you an idea, acute burn or not, that gives you an idea how good the resist mods are this season. So now, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to put another rocket, because, as I said to start with, you want to get the shank out of there quickly. You don't want to have him pushing around. Right? I'll put a rocket on... Now I'm going to break his shield one more time. He's finishable. Now where, where I'm going now, you can go down these stairs. There is a bit in the center you can go through. So I'm going to jump out and get that heavy. Dodge, and then get back over here. Go back up the stairs, don't go through the middle. Now I might have to burn some, some rockets to, to get the shank out here. Actually, because he's invis, uh, it took me a while to find him. There he is. 
just to our left. There's, there's always going to be tons and tons of shanks that come in here. So I'm going to throw my grenade on them. You see, I get yellow numbers straight away. Because I've got grenades weaken enemies. So we'll put another one on them. And because there's so many shanks, I can already see I've got heavy ammo lying about on the floor. I'm going to dodge, get out of there, because he will push. Uh, but he'll only push. See where I am now? He won't. It, it kind of seems to me that you, he's got to see. He's got to be face on with you. Dodge, go invisible again. And I'll just go past him. See, he's looking for me. And I'll just put a rocket that gets him out of there. Now, just to our right, I don't actually look at it here, but when I do my type, you can just see there's like a red pillar to our right, a big thick red pillar with a grey bit at the bottom, just to the right of where my, my bow is. You can actually go there on Titan and the Warlock during DPS. As long as you don't stray too much to the right, the bo the boss, the, it's very easy to kind of stay out, I wouldn't say stay out the way of the boss, but it's, it's a decent, decent bit of cover. So, you can see now, you probably seen you probably follow the part now, right? In between each each time that the shank goes, we are going to have a barrier champion. I'm just gonna try and take these shanks that the barrier was shielding. A real annoying mechanic, but it is what it is. I, I've never been a fan of the fact that barriers can shield enemies from us. And that we can't deal damage to them, but they can deal damage to us. And this is the problem with barrier champions, 100%, especially when they're in a position where that one was. I want six rockets now, I can afford a rocket on them now. Uh, is, is eventually, you'll do damage to them, and they'll just move the opposite way into cover, and that's the end of the damage. Can't put a rocket on them straight away because of that movement, that dodging left and right. He'll just do that. The minute you fire at him, he'll just do that. Now he's in front of the cover, he can't go back there. So I'm just going to dodge, I'm just going to get him out of there. Now, at this stage, look at the, look at the, the Sabre 2's health, it's halfway, right? I'm going to pop my super on him, right? And we'll, now, I'm going to go to the left here, right? But you can see, I don't want to take him over that last bar just yet, right? And the reason why is because this is the final stand. You're going to see something interesting here. From exploding these shanks that were too close to him, they actually take him into his final stand. I possibly shouldn't have fired my super when I did. <laughs> I wouldn't... I haven't thought back about it. I, uh, I don't know what I was thinking firing my super, but he's going to go in he has enraged state in a minute and luckily we're invis, invis hunters you see there that explosion eventually he is he's not going to like it, what I'm trying to do because uh, I could attack him and probably kill him here with two or, two or three rockets uh, what I'm trying to do is clear all the exploders out of the arena so I can move about the arena I don't want to have to deal with the shank. I'm in no pro trouble. I've got 176,000. I'm still scoring points. Uh, am I? No, no. I'm, I'm, I've got enough points, should I say. Uh, and there he is. He has gone in rage. So I'm just going to dodge. Go invis. Come over here. Now you have to watch out as well because he's not really that aggressive. He could be. But there's sniper shanks that are coming up. And I think they start sniping at me just about now. Dodge. Go in Viz. i move over here. He's moving over to where I was. Throw my grenade. One more rocket should do it. And that's the run. So, if I, if I, if I was giving you any, any tips about... You know, the only thing I could add to what you've seen in the run is... When he gets to half health, just come over to this side over here. Don't pop your super. Just come over. Clear the exploding shanks. And then once the exploding shanks have gone, then put a little bit on them and then start firing rockets. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the run. I certainly enjoyed making it. If you did enjoy it, a like would be much appreciated. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.